everyone, Dr. Julie here at Vitagene. I'm here today to dispel some of the myths of MTHFR. So what is MTHFR? MTHFR is a gene that codes for a protein enzyme called MTHFR. And that enzyme actually helps to convert the inactive form of folate into the active form so that we can try to recycle the homocysteine so that the levels aren't too high so that there isn't an increased level of inflammation that's associated with that. Methylation is the process that helps folate to get into the active form. And in the active form, it can help to recycle homocysteine so it doesn't accumulate and become too high. When you have an elevated level of homocysteine, it actually can put you at higher risk for diseases such as heart disease and stroke. So it is important for our body to be able to do that. Now, when you have a genetic variation where MTHFR is not as efficient at this conversion, potential health issues that I just mentioned can be an issue. So if you have this genetic variation, are you for sure at risk for these health issues? And the answer is you are not. There are ways around that. So if you are concerned, what you need to do is really make sure that you eat a well-balanced diet. In the 1990s, there was an issue that there weren't enough folate in foods. So a lot of the foods became fortified. And so now folate deficiency is relatively rare. And if you eat a lot of vegetables such as spinach and kale, the folate levels are really high. So you're able to account for trying to avoid those deficiencies. Now there are certain populations that are at risk where if, even if you ate clean, you really should try to supplement. For example, if you're pregnant, the studies show that you have to supplement with methylfolate 400 to 800 micrograms a day so that there is a lower risk of neural tube defects in the babies. So if you have this genetic variation where you're not as efficient at conversion, you should look into getting your levels checked with your doctor and then taking that supplementation. So if you're concerned, what should you do? The first thing you should look into is to get your genetics checked to see if you have the genetic variation where you are not as efficient at conversion. Then the next thing you should do is to get your lab work done. So you can check on homocysteine. There's a lab called RBC folate, which looks at the intracellular folate level to see if you're deficient. And then also other labs like fasting glucose or hemoglobin A1C or inflammatory markers like sedimentation rates or the C-reactive protein labs those will help to see whether you have inflammation that's elevated above normal. And that's important because inflammation can also elevate homocysteine. So it's not just a matter of B12 and folate. And if you are looking at all of these labs and they look either deficient, you should get help with that, but also look into getting a really well-balanced diet into your daily lifestyle. So a well-balanced diet of vegetables high in folate will be helpful. And also if you're pregnant, you should be supplementing with 400 to 800 micrograms of the methylfolate. Genetics are important because look at it as a way of thinking that the genetics are your blueprint of your body. How you live, the lifestyle you choose, is what's going to show how that house is built and whether the house is going to withstand time and the damage that occurs with living your life. So just because you have the genetics, it does not mean that you're sentenced to negative impact, you can alter the outcome. If you have further questions, feel free to contact us at support at vitagene.com.